I just uh, give you a little bit of background about myself and what I do. I'm a Maya specialist, obviously at Autodesk, and I've been working with Maya for a long, long time, too many years to count. I actually started working with it before it was uh, an official product, when it was kind of in the late stages of beta. Uh, so I have a long history with it, and you know, traditionally Maya is thought of as kind of a visual effects, character animation tool, also used in a lot, not only in film, but in game development. But historically, we've, we haven't really had a big footprint in, in the broader kind of motion graphics realm. And motion graphics means a lot of things to a lot of, a lot of, things to a lot of people. But in general, for motion graphics, you know, that's not really where we've focused. But in the last couple of years, we've done a lot to try to change that. So we spent a lot of time investing in very specific tools that were missing in Maya uh, that would kind of facilitate traditional kind of motion graphic workflows. So that's what we're going to cover today. And we're going to cover a pretty broad spectrum of different tools. Uh, we're not going to focus too much on any one area. So we're going to talk about a, a range of topics, like I said, and we're actually going to cover kind of an entire workflow from beginning to end. We're going to start with Illustrator vector graphics support. So we have, over the last year, added support directly for scalable vector gra graphics out of Illustrator. And we have a nice iterative workflow that allows you to go back and forth between Maya and Illustrator. We also, of course, have uh, Photoshop integration, so we support the PSD file format, and you can access different layers from within that file format uh, if you want to, or you can just see a comp view. I'll show how that works. We've also got the integrated type tool, which is pretty new. It came out uh, may maybe about a year ago, and it replaces the old legacy type tool, which just frankly and honestly was not very good in Maya. Uh, this is a very fast, easy to use tool, uh, very uh, um, non-destructive, so you can make changes really easily. Uh, and have uh, things like deformation and animation just kind of update with those changes. And then uh, one of the more interesting things that we've added, and you may have heard about, probably have heard a lot about likely, is MASH. And MASH is a procedural instancing tool that also has a bunch of cool procedural animation effects uh, built into it. So it allows you to create lots of kind of inherent motion in an object that uh, otherwise you would traditionally have to keyframe from scratch. This, this gives you a nice automated and also non-destructive way of creating that animation in an artist-friendly way. We'll also talk a little bit about rendering. Uh, we're going to talk about the integration of Arnold, which is a pretty new renderer in terms of Autodesk anyway. We acquired it about a year or so ago, and we have since integrated it into Maya as the default render. And we'll talk about Zinc Cloud rendering and our partnership with Google to essentially facilitate uh, batch rendering uh, on the cloud, so essentially a virtual render farm that anybody has access to. Talk a little bit about Shotgun in the context of RV. RV is a media player that's part of the sh broader Shotgun portfolio. I'm not going to get too much into Shotgun itself. Shotgun is a collaborative production management tool, but as part of that you have access to something called RV, which is really popular in and of itself, and it's basically a uh, I like to call it a quick time on steroids. It's a really high-end, uh, performant, uh, and also very versatile media player. And then we're going to finish up in After Effects, where we're going to talk about how you get not only images and animation out of Maya uh, as rendered as rendered sequences into After Effects for for compositing and um, you know color correction and that kind of thing, but also we'll talk about how you can get other types of data out of Maya, like camera animation, as well as tracking information for 3D objects so that you can basically splice 2D graphics into uh, an After Effects sequence uh, and have it essentially behave in 3D or act as though it's 3D. So with that said, let's uh, get on with it and uh, move on to the demo. I built this project specifically for this webinar so that we have kind of a goal and it's the starting point that would lead to a goal basically. And so this is kind of the end result. We're going to build this on the fly. So this is uh, essentially uh, an animated background with kind of a nebula star field and then the Maya logo kind of flies in with some procedural animation tied to that to create this kind of building effect where it actually builds the logo in the end. And then uh, the Maya 2017 just kind of flies in from the side and just slaps onto the side of the logo. So I'm going to go over all the various steps that were used to build this. What I'm using, by the way, as the viewer is uh, RV. Now RV, like I said, is a media player. It's QuickTime on steroids. I'm just showing you the final result, but we will get into more about RV and some of the cool things that you can do with it. We'll close it for now, though. So let's go into Maya, and we'll get started. So on the Maya front, a few things to point out. We've done a lot of work on our 
a UI over the last couple of releases. We've updated it, modernized it, and made it a lot more flexible so that you can do things like dragging and dropping uh, different interfaces in and out of the UI and docking them into other areas. That's something that um, was kind of sorely needed for a while, and now it's there. Uh, let me actually put this guy here back where it was. And we've also created these things called workspaces, which is similar to what you have in, in After Effects if you used it, uh, and allows you to set Maya's UI relative to a given discipline. So for instance, if you're a uh, sculptor, uh, you can have a very simple streamlined sculpting interface. It sets your shelf to all the sculpting tools. If you're a uh, animator, you can set your animation workspace. It loads up all your animation tools. It brings up your time editor and all the other associated animation editors that you might need. Likewise, if you're a renderer, renderer uh, or, a, or a shader developer uh, or lighter, you can bring up your rendering environment. And then if you're a motion graphics artist, we've got a MASH UI and a motion graphics UI. And what that will do is it will set the UI so that all of your motion graphics centric tools are in your shelf and then it brings up things like your time editor uh, or rather your graph editor and your timeline as well as uh, other interfaces like the MASH editor that you might need while you're working with motion graphics.